Thank you very much. Thank you for the invitation to join this panel. Um, it's a great pleasure to be here. Um, and I think um, we will be dealing, you will be dealing over the next two days with a very important theme, the potential of youth in the face of the challenges and opportunities um, of migration. And that's the potential of both as actors in migration and actors on migration. And I'll come back to that. Let me start uh, with um, a story, a story about a young woman called Esther. She's from Uganda. When she was only 17 years old, she was named Uganda's ambassador for women and girls. And since then, she's gone a long way. She's created an organization, an association called LIFT, Living in the Face of Trauma, an initiative designed to address one important dimension of forced migration in Africa. It empowers university students to develop innovative activities to create decent lives for women and girls in the world's largest refugee settlement in Uganda. We were extremely happy to welcome Esther as an EU young leader to the European Development Days in Brussels 2018. And in that context, she spoke at a high level panel on women, girls, and migration. She is also among the 42 young experts of the African Union, European Union Youth Corporation Hub, which we set up jointly with our friends and colleagues in the African Union. Through pilot projects, she is helping to turn the recommendations and proposals from the Abidjan Youth Declaration and the AUEU Youth Agenda into reality. Amongst those recommendations was the call for involving young migrants in conflict prevention processes with the objective of addressing different aspects of forced, forced displacement. For me personally, Esther's story highlights the instrumental contribution that youth can make when it comes to migration. Now, when we talk of youth, we're not actually quite clear what we're talking about. Um, there is no commonly agreed definition of youth. Um, and if you look around, many organizations take a rather generous view. I know that many, for, if you look at political parties and their youth organizations, they frequently have an upper limit of 40, 45, or even 50 years to be part of the youth league. Um, whatever you might say, I know one thing for sure, I don't even qualify there. Um, but whatever the definition is, when we look at youth across the world, and there are more of them than there ever have been, as the minister said. They have energy, they have ambitions, but they don't have patience, or they shouldn't. But that means that if they don't find what they want or what they need, they will go looking for it elsewhere. People always did, people always do and will do. That means that they do that within their own societies and sometimes get into trouble and therefore are marginalized or are pushed out or they pack their bags and leave. And we have forced displacement or we have regular or irregular migration. With all this in mind, we need to work on how we can focus on unlocking the potential of young people to respond to the challenges and opportunities of their context, their surroundings, and of migration. It means that we have to work for youth, with youth, and by the youth to um, address these issues. And we need to give the young people more prominence in our political agendas. In the European Union, we've taken important steps to make sure that issues of relevance to youth are integrated into our policies when we conceive those policies as well as into our partnerships and cooperation programs. Let me give you a few recent examples. In foreign policy, the guiding framework document for the EU is the so-called EU Global Strategy on uh, Foreign and Security Policy. That strategy specifically emphasizes the important, um, importance of deepening work on youth in order to um, foster pluralism, coexistence, respect, and cooperation at different levels of society. It also highlights the role of youth as 
actors in conflict prevention and conflict resolution to bring in different layers of society in that work. Equally, in the revised European Consensus on Development, which is our framework document for how we pursue development cooperation with partners around the world, the youth dimension has been included as an essential cross-cutting theme. In the new um, Africa-Europe Alliance for Sustainable Investment and Jobs, which was launched last year, um, the youth dimension is a very obvious part. That alliance is all about investing in people's future. So it's about giving education, equipping people with skills, and providing jobs where they are needed. That will help people build their futures and the futures of their country, their community, their continent. More of this will no doubt come in the political guidelines set out by the president-designate of the commission, uh, Mrs. Ursula von der Leyen. She has highlighted the importance of maintaining that like mainstream integration of the youth dimension into our policies. We have to trans uh, translate these commitments into specific policies and initiatives, and we try to do so in different ways. Um, talking of coming back to migration, developing legal pathways is an essential element in any comprehensive migration policy. Um, we have, in that context, been looking at ways to launch a number of pilot projects for legal migration which aim at enhancing circular migration and providing jobs and training opportunities, in particular for young people and young graduates from many partner countries. In that way, Lithuania has offered to provide training to 50 young Nigerian professionals in the ICT sector. Belgium is providing labor opportunities for a number of young Moroccans, as France is also to students and graduates from both Morocco, Egypt, and Tunisia. Spain has launched a similar project with um, Moroccan students. These pilot projects may still be small, but they are a way of trying to open new opportunities, and they are a way of paving the way for broader support. Um, you may be aware of uh, a European um, program still on the academic side called Erasmus and Erasmus Plus, which supports education and training exchange schemes for youth in Europe. One of the most popular programs of the European Union with literally millions of young Europeans who have participated in it over the past couple of decades. Um, what is less well known is that that program is also open to individuals and organizations from outside the EU. In the context of the Africa-EU Alliance, or Africa-Europe Alliance that I mentioned, the European Commission committed to supporting higher education scholarships through these exchanges to 35,000 African students and staff by next year, by 2020. And this was a commis commitment made in 2018, so it's over a two-year period. We're well on the way. We've so far, um, mobilized uh, places for 26,000, so we're well on track to reach that objective of 35,000 by next year. Extra funding also brings in more countries. Chad, Mauritania, and Liberia are examples of African countries who previously did not manage to participate in these exchanges and now do. At the same time, we encourage more Europeans to go the other way and more than 4,000 Europeans, it should be said more senior researchers and academic staff than junior students, have taken this opportunity to spend time at African universities. Within Europe, we've launched a so-called youth guarantee as a commitment by the EU and its member states to ensure that young people, particularly those who are vulnerable uh, and may not find employment or stay in, in education, receive support to bring themselves back into the mainstream. Um, we've developed skills profiles for third country nationals to help integrate 
um, immigrants in Europe into um, the, the uh, mainstream economy. Coming back to the outside world, um, I refer again to, to our relationship with Africa. We established a few years ago, uh, in 2015, the so-called EU Emergency Trust, uh, Trust Fund for Africa, which so far has mobilized a little over 4 billion euro with the aim specifically to foster stability, to contribute to better migration management, and to address the root causes of destabilization, forced displacement, and irregular migration. In the context of the work of that trust fund, for example, in the Sahel and Lake Chad region, projects on youth employment and creation of economic opportunities for over 300 million euro have already been implemented. They concern countries from the Gambia in the west to um, Chad in the east, um, Cameroon in the south, Mauritania to the north, that whole region um, to um, support people. And so far, more than 22,000 people have been involved in some of these activities and have also participated in specific conflict prevention and peace building activities in bringing them in, in new and innovative ways into that part of work. Finally, a key priority for us is to protect, protect migrant children, regardless of who they are, where they are. In 2017, the EU outlined an approach for the protection of children in migration. Building on previous work, we want to do more to address root causes of children's irregular migration, to protect them along the migratory route, enable them to access adequate reception procedures, um, and with all the necessary safeguards and ultimately provide them with durable solutions and a stable future. But, but working for youth in the way that I have described is not enough. We need to work with youth as well. Young people don't raise issues, they can present us with the solutions. The interest is not lacking. When developing our youth strategy for the period up to 2027, we started a dialogue process which ultimately involved 50,000 young people from all across Europe. In consultations, we found out that migration and the integration of migrants emerged as one of the four priority topics that young people expected the EU to focus on. Over the past years, and following the leadership of the EU High Representative for Foreign Affairs and Security Policy, we have also developed a number of programs for encounters with young people and the inclusion of young people in our foreign policy processes um, all over the world. Listening to young people is a necessary step to take our foreign policy agenda forward. It's a necessary step to find durable solutions to conflict situations. We need to empower young people and give them the opportunities to shape the solutions to the issues that concern them. A very concrete example of this approach is the Young Mediterranean Voices Initiative launched by the High Representative in March 2017. Since then, significant number of young Mediterranean people from all around the Mediterranean, all shores of the Mediterranean, have provided inputs, analysis, and ideas to help us shape policy and program design um, in, and make new policy instruments of the EU a reality in that region. They have become de facto a kind of informal consultative bo body helping us take our policies in the Mediterranean basin forward. Migration has proven to be one of the key areas of interest of these young people. Similarly, on the AU EU youth track, we aim to strengthen and continue the inclusion of young people in the Africa EU partnership at all levels. It was very invigorating to see young diaspora civil society representatives participate and intervene during the last senior officials meeting for the Valletta process, which took place by now about a year ago in Addis Abeba. Youth civil society representatives are also these days taking part in civil society seminars on migration and refugee issues, um, which will provide um, the recommendations for 
the next AU-EU human rights dialogue in Banjul a bit later this autumn. Similarly, there's an example of how we mobilize youth voices in the G5 in the Sahel as a complement to the work that the G5 do on stabilization and security in that region. Finally, looking ahead, the new EU strategy for youth that I mentioned foresees the establishment of a new EU youth coordinator that will be entrusted with strengthening dialogue at all levels and in all policy areas with young people to allow them to bring their contribution to the shaping of EU policies. So as a last few words, let me come back to my story about Esther. Recently, the African Union, the European Union Youth Cooperation Hub in which she is involved was selected among the 10 top governance initiatives which will be showcased in Paris for the next edition of the Paris Peace Forum this November. Esther has a clear aspiration to give migration a human face and to provide a better future for uh, those who have been forced into displacement. Her personal story unmistakably proves the impactful contribution that youth can make when it comes to migration if we only allow them to unlock their potential. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Christian. And now uh, I will turn to His Excellency the Minister, Deputy Minister of Family, Labor and Social Services of Turkey, Ahmet Erdem. Minister, you have the floor. 